All right, guys, before we get a little further into, we're going to focus a little bit on Earth's revolution today and focus a little bit more on the seasons. But before we do that, I just want to make sure we're clear on the difference between Earth's rotation and Earth's revolution. Uh, this little animation right here is a perfect example of, rot of what a rotation looks like. It's just an example. It's just um, when the Earth spins around itself like this. Don't hit yourself in the face, Mr. Huber. It's just spinning around itself, and revolution has to involve another object. It's when the Earth goes around something else. It revolves around something else, and in this case, we're talking about the sun. So rotation goes around itself. Revolution goes around something else. And when we talked about a rotation, again, great animation. Let's just imagine this big yellow block is the sun. When it's rotating, when you're facing that yellow block, obviously you're getting daylight. When you're facing away, it's when it gets nighttime. So that's the causes of Earth's day, um, rotation is you get day and night. And if you think about a full day on Earth, you should know it takes about 24 hours for one rotation to complete. And again, when you're facing the sun, you got daytime. Facing away, you got nighttime. Now, not to be confused with a revolution, which causes our seasons, which we're going to talk about in just a second. And for the Earth to complete one revolution, one whole trip around the sun, and for us to get all four seasons, that takes about 365 days. So that's all a little bit of a uh, recap from what we talked about last week. Um, but focusing on the revolutions, um, it's a little bit more complicated how we get our seasons than just saying, hey, we're, turn we're facing the sun, it's daytime, facing away, it's nighttime. A couple things you need to know. Um, one thing that you may hear me say is Earth's orbit. Now, orbit is really another word for revolution. Uh, when the Earth orbits, that's talking about the same thing. It just follows a path around the sun. Now, when you have seasons, we know that summer is way hotter than the winter. And you may think, oh, well, when we have summer, we're just closer to the sun. And when we have winter, we're farther away. Not the case. Um, we are actually about the same distance from the sun all 365 days during that revolution. Now, does anybody remember how many miles away that sun is? If you do, say it out loud. I can't hear you. But it's about 93 million miles, and that distance doesn't change. So if you hear me say Earth's orbit, just know that I'm talking about the Earth's revolution, that trip around the sun. Now, the most important thing that you need to think about when we're talking about seasons has a lot to do with Earth's axis. Now, when you look at these pictures, you see this pole that looks like it's cutting through the Earth. It's an imaginary line, guys, okay? And it runs through the center of the Earth, this axis. So really, it puts the Earth on a tilt. And the Earth's axis is tilted 23 and a half degrees. That might be a really good question of the day one day. But instead of just having the Earth straight like this, Let's see if I can. It's got a bit of a tilt. It's got that imaginary axis that goes through it. And you can see this little dotted line right here. If this earth was straight, um, this axis would be here and it would just be straight down the middle. But it's got that little bit of tilt on it, which will explain the seasons in just a second. Now, that doesn't mean we're kind of walking on a slant. We don't feel that. Um, but that kind of depends on how much not how much sunlight we get, but how much heat or how much indirect heat we're getting for the seasons. I've got a really good picture to explain that right now. So, uh, can I get this out of the way? Yeah, I can. Make it a little bit bigger. So, orbit is important because we know we get the seasons from that Earth's revolution. Same thing. The axis is important for really the same reason. Um, I want to focus right here. So since you can see that tilt, you see that you got that little line down the middle here. If you paid attention, to, well, you might not have talked about that with SG yet. I'm assuming you did. You may have heard, the, uh, heard about the equator, kind of where we got a split right now. And then you may have heard her talk about the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. So those are the, the words I'm going to use. Anything above the equator, that's considered the northern hemisphere. Anything below is the southern. Now, if you're looking at the picture that I provided you, North America, where we are, uh, is in the northern hemisphere. So if you're looking at this picture, you've got the sun. You see the Earth revolving. It's completing an orbit around. Um, let's, flash, let's fast forward to say we're in December. If you look at this picture, that tilt causes one part of the Earth 
to be leaning closer towards the sun. If you look here, the southern hemisphere is a little bit tilted toward the sun, and the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun. Now that doesn't mean we're not getting sunlight because you still get the sun out every single day, no matter what the season is. But if you're looking at this picture, the southern hemisphere is getting that direct sunlight and the northern hemisphere is getting something we call indirect sunlight. So we still get that sunlight, but we're not getting the same heat that they're getting on the southern um, hemisphere. So since we live in the northern hemisphere in December, that's when we get winter because we are the farthest distance away from the sun that we are in during the whole revolution. And then down south of the equator, the southern hemisphere, that's going to be where they're getting summer because that's where they get the most direct sunlight because they're tilted the closest towards the sun. Now, we're still 93 million miles away, but that axis and the tilt that we're on has a lot to do with how much of that heat we're getting from the sun. So fast forward a few more months, look down here at this second picture that are still revolving and we get about right here. Now this is where we get our fall and we get our spring because the tilt on our picture here is going left and right. It's not putting anything closer to the sun or anything farther away. If you look, it's got this, the Northern hemisphere is just tilted to the right and the Southern hemisphere is just tilted to the left. That means they're getting the same amount of sunlight. They're getting an equal amount on the Northern hemisphere and the Southern hemisphere but the, uh, the seasons are still opposite here. Now you should know once we go from winter, we're eventually gonna move into spring. So north of the equator, the Northern hemisphere right here, we're getting our spring season. And then down on the Southern hemisphere, that is where they're getting fall. Now the tilted axis comes back into play in this third picture. If you look, you can again see, now we have one side of the equator leaning a little bit closer to the sun. And we got one part below the equator that's a little bit further away. So fast forward to June, a couple more months. This is where the Northern Hemisphere, where we are, we're tilted and we're as close to the sun as we get. Now, distance wise, we're still 93 million miles, but we're taking in most of that sunlight. That sun is shining directly on the Northern Hemisphere, which is when we're getting our summer because that's where our tilt is and the uh, north, southern hemisphere would be completely opposite. That's where they're gonna get their winter because again, they're still getting that sunlight, but they're tilted away from the sun on that axis. All right, and then fast forward to September, which is a little bit where we past where we are right now, but it fits exactly the situation we're in. Again, the tilt here, the axis doesn't put us any closer or any further to the sun. It's tilting to the right, it's tilting to the left. So right here, Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere, they're getting an equal amount of sun. It's our fall season, and right below us, it's going to be their spring season. So right now, anybody south of the equator, they're experiencing their spring season and getting the same amount of sunlight as we are um, experiencing our fall season. So pictures two and four, the axis doesn't necessarily have a whole lot to do with why we're feeling temperature the way that we are. But if you're looking at uh, picture number one and picture number three, you can definitely see in December how we're tilted away from the sun. So that's where we're getting our colder weather. But you can also see in picture three where we're tilted towards the sun and that's where we're gonna get our warmest weather. Um, so that kind of gives you a little bit better explanation of how the seasons are affected by Earth's orbit or Earth's revolution. And that axis has a lot to do with it. Um, so this will actually lead us into our next topic, which most people really enjoy. I like teaching it. Um, we understand that the earth is always half lit. So we know when we're getting daytime, we know the other side of the, the earth is getting daytime. That has to do with the earth's rotation. Um, it's a little bit more complicated with moonlight, um, which is something we'll do we'll talk about in our next video. But what I want you to do is maybe do it right now. Um, I'm assuming you're watching this when the sun is out. See if you can still go outside and look up at the sky and locate the moon. Um, and if not, maybe go out tonight before you go to sleep. Look up in the sky, see if you can locate the moon. I want you to get into a habit of doing that nightly.
just so you can kind of see the changes that progress for the moon as the days go by. Um, there's going to be days where you might not see it. There's going to be days where you see a whole lot of it. Um, but that's going to be our next little topic of discussion um, when talking about the sun, the earth, and the moon. Um, so on Thursday, I had a rotation versus revolution Google form for you to complete. And I wish I wouldn't have put it on there because I covered more on that sheet than I did in the videos, which was not my plan. So if you did that on Thursday, I've got it linked again today. I need you to do that sheet again because I went ahead and deleted everybody's responses because I, I, you shouldn't be expected to answer questions that you didn't learn anything about, if that makes sense. So once you view this, I do want you to go back and into the announcement and finish that sheet. It's eight to 10 questions maybe. Uh, but now you've learned everything from those two videos on that sheet. So be looking forward to the moon phases. Go outside, start looking at it, start studying it. And um, I look forward to talking more.